Security tutorial with Spring Boot, Spring Data, JPA, TeamLeaf, MySQL database. In this tutorial, we will build registration, login, and logout. Here is what you will learn how to build Spring MVC application using Spring Boot, how to configure Spring Security. Spring Security Authentication with User Details and User Details Service How to Develop Login and Registration Features Implementation Spring Logout Features Configure MySQL Database in Spring Boot How to Display Authenticated User Information Using User Details and Principal Interface And then the last one How to Use TeamLeaf Attribute to Receive and Display User Information this is what we will going to build in this tutorial. We have a registration form which include full name, username and password. Now let me have the full name as Aliyu Sahabo like this, the username Aliyu and let me paste the username as password. Now if I register it will show me the registration successful and if i go to login and then paste it again then it will take me to dashboard here is the dashboard welcome to dashboard ali sahabo adam and then if i log out here is the logout successful url that i have and then if i go to the registered again i try to use the same username and this will not register it will show me that the username is taken and this is what we will going to build in this tutorial here is what i use for this tutorial uh, technologies use spring boot spring mvc we use spring security java spring data jpa team leaf and my sql and here we have the registration form and the channel through which the registration pass upon the successful registration uh, in the browser then user controller we have user service user repository and then to database create new application we will initialize our spring boot application Spring Starter Project here in STS. Okay, here is the name of the project costume login application. I will just add application here. Costume login application. I will be using Marvin. Here is Java 11. So we have costume login application. The name of the package costume login and here i will change the description to costume user login application location i think this is all the necessary things that we need here and we will going to next so here are the list of the frequent dependency that i use in my stas we need my sql driver and then we need spring data jpa we also need spring security which is what we will be using efficiently in this project uh, what the project is all about i mean we need spring web and team leaf okay these are the five dependencies that we will be using in this project and then let's click next so the application is in is is importing import getting started here is our just initialize spring application here we have package inside this package we have costume login application which is our starter class and 
here we have our static template and application dot properties here is our marvin pom dot xml and in case you may have issue with your 3.11 you can add this dependency you can add this dependency in the property here we have property you can add the the second one in if you have arrow in the pom the xml but you can only add it when you have an arrow after you add it you can go to marvin and then update project inside update project you can take on force update of snapshot release okay and the arrow may, will go then you can restart your ide and here is where you can restart your ide so now what we can do next even if we run this application now we may have issue because we have my sql driver and we have not configured so the next thing we will do is configure our my sql in application dot properties and create database for users to configure my sql in spring boot we need my sql workbench here is my sql workbench you will need my sql workbench and we will create a connection in this my sql workbench so the name of the connection is local instance you can name it whatever you like i just named this one local instance where we have this port so we can just have this to taste the connection and put your password so during the installation you have you will have your own password and then by pressing ok you have created this so these are the previous database connection i have used and this is the new one that we can use now let's create a database inside this my sql workbench to create database you will go to create new schema this create new schema and then press on the create new schema the name of the database we will use is user so then apply click on apply again so by clicking on apply finish we create a database called user so and in this third data table we have empty table we have no table so we will create a jpa entity later and then uh, using the jpa entity we will have tables so the next thing is that we have to go to application dot properties here is application dot properties inside this application dot properties we will have our configuration code for the connection to my sql database so and here is the code which i save in notepad you can have it so let's copy and paste these are comment this is comment and we have this as comment also this is a configuration code we have data source url here is the data source url that will connect us to the db and we have root as a password and username for the access but for your installation you may have something different this is just username and password here is the name of the db that we create here in here in my sql workbench this is the name of the db and we are connecting to this db so and we have this spring 
the JPA Hibernate DLL Auto update. This line configure the behavior of Hibernate schema generation or validation, and we set it to update. The value update tells the Hibernate to update the database schema automatically. So we also have this login level dot org Hibernate SQL, uh, which we set to debug. This line set the login level for Hibernate SQL statement to debug. With this configuration, Hibernate will log the SQL statement it generate and execute at the debug level. So we also have this login level org Hibernate dot type, which we set it to trace. This line set the login level for Hibernate type binding to trace. With this connection, Hibernate will log detailed information about the mapping and binding of Java types. So this is all about the configuration that we will have for the MySQL DB, which is MySQL database. And the next thing we will do is to create a JPA entity. We will create a entity which is a model class which we will use as a da database entity. So now let's create a package new package dot model. So package this is a package inside this we will create a class user so now we create a user this user is a jpa entity which we will map it to our database then we need to add this annotation at entity which is telling us that this is a jpa entity and then we need to name the table name and even if we did not name the table it will be as this class the name will be the same as this class but we need different name and a table we will use a table annotation to name the our database table name equal to users so i name it users so whatever the Whatever we have in this class, which is which in a uh, which uh, in, include variables, the variables that we have will serve as a column in the database. We have we will have private long private long ID and this ID which will serve as primary key in the database, but we will annotate it with at ID will serve as primary key in our database by annotating this then we need a generated value at generated value so we will set the generation type with this uh, generated value this annotation specify the strategy for generating the values of the primary key in this case we will set it to Let's say the generation gener strategy. Strategy to generated type dot auto. This auto, which means that the persistence provider will determine the appropriate strategy based in the that base in the on the database in use. So we have this. Then we ha will have private string. We will have private string username in the database we need username column this will serve as column and then we need private password string which is also a string pass what so we will remove this private password and then we also need private string 
full name so we will remove these with autocomplete so we have this variable and the next thing we will do is generate getters and setters the method getters and setters we will just generate it like this we need all these to generate getters and setters so we generate getter and setters and then we also need the constructor so we will have constructor in this class constructor using fieldboard excluding this at id just the because it is primary key so you see we generate this getter and setter and let hard constructor public user okay so this is all we uh, will have in this jpa entity now let's run this program again and see what we and then go to our database we will have this if our configuration goes good we will have this username password full name and id as a column in our database now the application is running so it the application is running okay we have web server failed to start because it already in use we will rerun the application that is because there is already running spring application now we run it again so okay now our application runs successfully now let's go to our database and then here we refresh the db so you see we have users and now uh, you can click here to see the users table so you see we have this column full name id password and username so and this id is our primary key as i said so the next thing we will do is to have a repository service and controllers now let's create a class service class controller class and then we will create repository and we need a package we need a package called repository first we will have our repositories repositories which we will create a single user repository inside this package then we need interface user repository so here is our interface user repository then this interface will extend jpa repository and then we have two parameter this parameter we need user here and then we also need add long we need long here which use as a primary key that is generated now let me add this user again to import the model so here is what we have here and then we need a method to find the user by username of type user then find find by let have user name autocomplete so then we need to pass a parameter here of type string then we need user name so this is what we have in our jpa repository we need to annotate this class with at repository okay 
this is what we have in this class the next thing we need is a service package we can use service package to have user service and user service implementation we don't need to populate our controller so we will use service user service implementation to have implementation for our method we will not have only the single method we have will have another method to save the user so now let's create another let's create another package which is inter service we will have a class of type service inside this so in this class service we need interface so we need user service here user service okay so we create user service here and then we need two methods that we can use of type user let import this find by user name we will later implement it in the user service implementation with the find by username in our repository so in this find by username uh, the same thing as that in the repository we need string string user username so it will start by small letter let's check the spelling okay it's okay so we need another method user so this thing this now time around we need save so we will save a user here instead of passing a user object we need to use data transfer object which is a dto to receive the information of the user and then pass it to our user so the next thing we will do here is to create a user dto before having this method because we need to pass some parameter of user dto here so let me show you now let's create another package so this package will be dto so now that we create a package dto we need a class a class user dto so since that we said that this class we will use this user dto to receive information it is not a entity class it will not go to database so we will not annotate this class with at entity all we will do with this class is to receive the user information and pass it to the user so let go back to our user class of model and then copy some code so we will copy this and then pa paste it here because we will use the same data types to receive the information and then pass it to our object so we need constructor uh, parameterized per constructor and non-parameterized constructor the same as what we have in the user so with the getters and setters now let's first generate constructor using field generate all so and then there is no need for this we also need constructor with no parameter so let's go to source generate constructor without this will deselect all so we have this constructor again and the last thing we we need to implement in this class is the we need to have getters and setters so generate getters and setters yes for all these fields generate getters and setters so here is our getters and setters username set username get password set password full name so and then now we will go back to our user service to continue the implementation we will pass the user detail here 
and user detail the next thing we need here is our service class we need to implement this interface in our service user service implementation then we need to create a class so in this class we will have user service impl this means implement so so in this class what we will do in this class face the what we need in this class we need to implement user service so well, we need to add on implemented method we, the two method that we just have here are the two method so the next thing we will do here is that to have our private user repository because we will not implement this method without this repository without our user repository now let's check for the user repository here this is our user repository and then we need to add constructor using this field so here is the constructor so this is a very simple implementation then let go but let go to our find by username the only thing we can do here is just simple just find by username by calling user repository and then access the find by username that we have okay this is all for this implementation and then let's go to the other method this method uh, this is where we can use the user dto to get the data and pass it to our user so we need user face and then user uh, the second but before let annotate uh, this class with at service so that we cannot forget at service okay so we annotate this class at a service and then the left go to new so we need to import this class let me start with the face it is simple to have it like this so we import it user equal to new user so we need to pass this parameter but before passing this getting this from this user detail and then passing it to user let's check our user so let's see we have username face password full name okay let's go back to our user service implementation since that we have seen the pattern user dto dot get face we need pass username then user dto dot get we need password then we need again user dto dot full name so this is what we have as i tell you before we will not implement this without having our uh, user repository we will st still use the user repository to save this okay now the next thing is that we need to user repository where is the light check here okay dot find no dot save we need to save this so you see uh, this is the simplest way to save this by receiving the data from the user detail so this is what we have in this class so far okay now let's go to add for the controller class we need class user controller we will all have the request here for the for the user including the registration and the login so we have this we will annotate this with add controller okay so we annotate this with, with add controller we need this user service private user service first user service okay so we need add get mapping 
to for the get request at get mapping we need public for we will implement for the home face which is home page public string home page okay so as simple as this home page return string uh, we will pass the name of the page here the name of the page is also home and then we will duplicate this for the register and the login and then we also have the pass mapping then before then we need to pass the url so we need something like this home which we can use to access this page and then let duplicate this and change just do a little change okay so we need to change these to login and then login so uh, is here login and then the same thing here we need to have this as register and then load duplicate it here we need register and then register here so the name of the method and the name of the url where we can get it and then the name of the page so here will be post mapping then let's change this to post mapping for where we can save the user and you know, this post mapping and then we will pass this to okay so this is what we have and the name of this method which said registered safe so we will pass the register here let's check this uh, this is not the only implementation for the controller class but before then we need to go and create those pages and this we will go to HTML file so and then first create like how we do sequentially home we created home so then let go and create uh, the create HTML file login login okay this is okay and then we will need to have another okay which is home the name of the page correspond to the name that we return make sure okay we created home now it's register so here is we we have register here are the pages that we have so now let's do some little change here title the name of the title for home home and then for the login we will all have login here login and then for the register we will have we'll need register here register so this is what we have so far and our don't forget our controller class this is not the only implementation we have in the user controller so in this controller we will come and implement the model uh, this is just a plain implementation and we need to do it step by step implementing login and registration then we go we will come to here and have the implementation and the same thing for this one step by step so that you can understand so the next thing we will have is to generate the html form uh, register using chat gvt and it is very simple now let's go to the next okay, now to now to generate registration form we will use chat gvt here you will have you will see how i ask the equation and you can ask the same thing it will generate it for you it is simple to work with and it will reduce a lot of work so please can you generate me html css nice looking registration and login form 
separately and I want it to have enough width here is the color that I give so now that you see how it generated this it's amazing you know so let's copy this to our registration form it reduced a lot of work so and the next thing i will copy the css to my style i have to use the static because i have i am having issue with the static here with the in with my css so i will just use the style to have my css inside the style but you can do you can check for the static maybe you are on will do but for me i am using this style here so let me go back and copy the css to copy the css it is simply copy cut then uh, you have to paste this here and then and um, i have asked it for a registration successful message and then we will use it here also so let's go back and check for the registration successfully and um, and see how i uh, ask the question so wow great i'm glad you like it okay so i want registration successful message logout message and login error message so now let's go back to the message here is the message so I can copy the message and then paste it inside the form container don't forget we have to paste this inside the form container so here is the message and then next thing we will do is to copy the CSS again for the success message okay now let's go back to our style to have this you know so we will have it here so there is a little modification we can do and this modification will be done step by step then what we will do first is now let's go to this success message in our form container here is what we have here so the only modification we can do here is that to have div and then this div will have attribute for the team leaf th it can only pass this if it is success th param dot success it will only show this if it is success yeah. let's copy this and put this inside this now even if we run this html it will not show this registration successful unless we implement the success in our post controller so the next thing we will do is that we need the first full name face full name and then here is supposed to be full name also full name then we need a th field which we can use to receive this information and pass it to our getters and setters and then pass it to our user class i mean to pass it in the user class to h th field okay we will have this type th field and then with the name of the full name we need star then pass the full name here so we need full name here so for this we also have full name here we need full name here again this is the modification we are doing we also need full name here so for this we finish with this group 
so the next group is that with the email which we can use username and then this will also be username with small letter as we did in the our user so this type will be username oh no this type will be text we are not using email since that we have text here we need a little modification in the css here where we put this we need to have text no text like this so let's go back and continue so we need this here okay we need to pass username to this username and then here we also need to pass username enter your username and the same thing here we need to pass username and for the id we also need username only this type you will leave to text and then i think this group we also finish with this group and the next group is that we will go to the password and the password we can only change this one and the remaining one are correct since that it is password it is written password enter your password this is all we can have here and the next thing we need to expand here sorry now if the user already registered you know it he will go to the login so we need to pass if already registered if already register registered okay i don't know if the spelling is correct if already registered we will have this a okay so we will pass the link here and then here is where we will pass th you know th with h wave like this so then we will pass the login url here now double quotation so we need art for the attribute of the url login and then we need to pass login here so we will pass login okay so this is okay for this class and let me just check param doc success so we need to have uh, some modification here this param doc success uh, we need at something no i do a sign like this param dot success okay we need something like this and then th if param success we pass this so we finish with this class so with this so we will copy this and then have it here and just do a little modification this the modification will start from here from the top title will be login so since the title is login let's scroll and check so this so successful we have we will have param dot arrow param dot arrow and then here we will pass invalid invalid user name or password okay so param dot arrow and this message will be to arrow message so 
we will change this error error message if param dot error that is for the login if the user try to access with the wrong credential we will have if param dot error and then we will also have for the logout successful URL. Now let's go and have duplicate this again. That for the logout we have I have param dot logout. Okay, as simple as this, we will have logout message. Logout message. Now since that we have changed this message we need to go back to the implementation and then have something like this so and then we also need this logout message logout error message and logout message okay where is this Okay, so logout message. Okay, so let go and check. Here we will change this to logout successfully. This is just the view, not the implementation. Logout. Log. Logout. Successful. Successful, and then let's have some this okay so we have this implementation and then the only thing we can change here we have to remove this full name okay so there is something we can implement for the register which we forget and the same thing for the password in the form which is the attribute for the form so here the attribute for the form include method role th action and th option let's start with the method okay we will have method the method is post and then we also need role the role is form. We also need what th action. Th action. Then in this th action, we will pass the URL. So at register register, and then we will also have th object object so in this th object we will need at then user so the same thing we will have but we can only have a little modification in this okay and for this will be login so and then uh, this will also be login so let's check here we will have the button login this will be capital letter since it is not the URL and this will be register because register let me collect cook already the spelling and then we'll have register register here so we have we will have to change the message to register here okay so this is okay for this and let's check we have username password okay and then and we all have the same thing 
and just a little modification now all i think is that we have to run this to see this view to check and if there is an error so it is starting application started now let's copy the password before implementing our own customized login we will still be using this password so local host and then here is we pass this and then user so let access so let's try to go to register Okay, we have an arrow and let's check what the arrow is saying and uh, change the arrow is from the team leaf so let's go to arrow during line 101 register let's go to line 101 register and see what we have th field full name okay we need to have implementation in the user controller so for the post we need add add model attribute and this model attribute we will pass it to user so and then we need a user dto user dto user dto and then we have to save this user service dot save user service dot save save user detail and this is all for this and for this one we need we also need model or the same thing as this model i just change the pattern so we need model we also need user detail here so we will not duplicate we write this we will just duplicate this one okay model dot let's check the string and the object so we need user here okay so this is what we will have here and then i think we will copy this login our login also need this it will de use this to access the data so we also need this and let me run the application the error will go by now since it okay we have arrow so let's check we did not close this okay let's run the application so the application is starting so we will use this password to access okay the, this is not the page that we will go on this this is the page we need to have the 
axis so here is our registration form so you see our registration form now the next thing we will do is to have our home so for the dashboard look we also ask that dbt to generate so let's go to home and then here is how the question is asked please can you generate me html css nice looking welcome dashboard with name user so here is the body okay so we will copy this div to our HTML home so and then we will have style inside this to input our style there okay let's go back to this and copy the here is the copy cut and then so let's have this so before we use the th text to access the user detail information now we need to implement our security configuration so after implementing security info configuration we use it we will use custom user detail to finish the implementation this is just an html form generated so the next thing we will look at and which is the last thing is the security configuration and then to finish our application okay So for the security we need a class security config so before let's create a package dot config configuration <coughs> so in this package we will create a class security configuration security config so it's okay so as not to have the same class with the security configuration in the security spring security we need add configuration annotation configuration so and then we need at enable web security at enable web security okay we have these two annotation and then the first thing we need to is the security filter chain which is a bin which we can set our url and form login logout okay now let go so we need add bin okay so we need the public security filter chain public security security filter chain then we need security filter chain just the name we will use this security filter chain as a name so then we need the method will choose exception choose exception okay and then so the class will also have parameter which is http security http security and then we will have http like this which we can access so the next thing we need is that we http so we can access the members so we need 
CRCS out then this I will so from here we can start assessing the authorized HTTP request method we need authorize author rise HTTP we have the one with lambda expiration and we also have the one which have no lambda expiration so let's use this one so the first thing we will do here is that we need the request matches so we'll have request matches the one with the pattern okay request matches we will pass these to we will pass the register the register will be available for all users then permit all so we also need request for this pattern we need home also permit to board admin and then we also need form login so the next thing is form login and then we will use and to have a chain together okay so let me choose and okay from here i will use form login so for this form login let me see if i can access it from here for the form login we need face login page okay which i will pass our own login page now if we access the we we will have our own login page instead for the spring security instead of the spring security and then let go further and have also we will have the url and the url which is login processing url login processing url so this login processing url we will have we will have it to as login okay then the next thing we will also have login or default successful url so default successful url which we will pass it to home and it's half two parameter we will set the other one to true so and the next thing we will do is the logout so and okay we will have an then logout so we will start assessing this method we start with invalidate http session which we will set it to true and then it will invalidate the http session for the user who log out and then sorry this we will access i need this to access okay so we need clear authentication it will clear the authentication of the user who log out true so and the next thing we also need logout request matcher logout request matcher which is set to new we will have and and part matches and part and part matcher and part request matcher okay and part request matcher okay we will pass this logout url here logout url here okay so there is something i need to put here on the default successful url permit all permit all 
okay so this is the logout successfully URL and then we will log, log out successfully URL okay log out successful URL which we will pass is to login and then have question mark logout okay this is what we will have here then we need permit all okay so for this the method will return http dot build so we finish with this class okay this is the implementation we have this and then we also we first have this one and then we also have this then we have the logout okay the next thing we will do is uh, to have the configure global method and then before having this configure global method we need custom user details and custom user detail services so we will go to user service to have this method first we will start with custom user details we will go to the service where the user service is and then let create an a class okay we will have custom custom user sorry custom user details this custom user details will implement user details okay so we will have this add-on implemented method so this is what we have let's set this to true true and then true we also need to our user service that we will create user detail service will return this class true so and the next thing we will do is to create some variable private string username and then we need private string password okay and then we need also private of type collection then we will pass this to this collection which uh, this type return the object that implement granted authority extend granted authority interface it will return the object that have implement the granted authority which we will set to authorities so and the next thing we will do is this we will have the private string private string full name full name okay so we'll have this and then we will have the constructor with this implementation for this field so this is supposed to be like this and then so we need to generate source generate constructor using field we need username password authorities full name okay here is the class so as simple as this we don't need this then uh, 
okay let go on step by step this will not return null we will pass the object inside this this will not return null it will return authorities authorities field that we have so and then we will have this password will return password string password and then this will return username and then we also have this will return true we have username password authorities and this full name we will only use this full name to in the with the principal interface to authenticate the username okay now to authenticate the user full name in our dashboard okay now let go and have user detail service okay we need custom user service so the difference between this class and the user detail service this class will have the information of the user and the other class user detail service will use the information of the user to check if the user exists now let's see how it works now let's create this new and then the thing we can do here is to have class okay costume costume user details so user details costume user details service okay let's have this class like this and then public class custom user detail service this class will implement this interface user detail user detail service here is the user detail service it have only one method which we will override load username so and then let, don't forget that we have to annotate this class with our service okay so the next thing we will do is then to load the username we need a user here and user repository user we need to here is the user and then user so we also we need private user repository user repository okay so then we will use this user equal to user repository sorry not the class one the field one user repository dot find by username so we pass the username here okay this is nice you know so then we will check if user it will find the username and check if user equal to equal to null if user equal to equal to null null then we'll have implementation here throw new username not found exception throw throw new username username not found username not found exception so we will pass the same username or password not found username sorry username or password not found okay so we finish with this implementation so here is where we can use our custom user 
the class that we create we can use this information of the user and then to access the database and check if the user exists and if the user does not exist we will have username not found exception this is simple but then before then we need to in have the this class this method public simple collection as we have earlier it will return the object that implement granted authority extent extent granted authority so we have extent granted authority which is the name of the method let add it to authority so as uh, simple as this we need this method will return it will just return so we have username not found here so it will just return Aris sorry Aris Aris and then as list then we will pass the object new new simple granted authority simple granted granted authority so it's already user let do it in capital user user so now we need this our costume user details here so you know it have some parameter and then we will pass this new so here is where we can pass the parameter user so we need to have it as it it is here in the parameter custom user details it starts with username and password let us username and password username username and then user dot user dot i am having the problem with auto completion user dot password so uh let's go back and check again we have authorities and then full name okay we have authorities to make it easy let's have this and then so that we can have a nice view of user and the get authorities okay so now we will just pass these authorities the method that we have here authorities okay so the next thing we will have is user dot get full name so user dot get full name we need comma here oh, we will use this object to check in the db with the detail given so this is the implementation of this class and it finish we will now go back to our class which is security config configuration okay in this security configuration we will auto add custom user service okay security configuration now let auto add at auto add auto add custom user service so custom custom user Digital service and the of parameter custom user service. So this is all for here. Then we will need to create another method. This method at what you wait. 
so uh, otherwise probably void global config or configure global configure global so this method will also choose exception i will not type this again i will just copy this one as simple as this okay i will just use this one and then the class we will have here is that auto authentication manager builder authentication 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 manager builder sorry manager so here is the authentication manager builder which is set to out like this then we will use this to pass custom user detail service out dot user detail service which we will pass custom user detail service and then we will need password encoder so we need password encoder here but before we have password encoder we go we will have to a bin for public static password encoder we need a bin add bin method and the method will be public static okay public static password encoder and then let's give it the name password encoder and this will just return by creep by creep so the spelling is by creep password encoder okay we return new by creep password encoder and we will have this okay then this password encoder we will pass it here and we finish with this class security config so the next thing we will do here after finishing this then if you remember we have a class user service implementation in this class we will just have at autoweight for the password encoder since that we use password encoder password encoder so we need to encode the password here where we use password then we can use password encoder dot encode then we will pass the password as a parameter let's use then user dto to to access the password so it will encode the password so we finish with this class also and then the next thing we will go to our controller class in the controller class we will have some implementation for the principal interface now let's go to our controller class to use user detail service okay so now we need to go to controller we need something okay in this controller we will have to generate field for this so that okay generate constructor using field okay simple as this so the implementation of the login registration 
and what is remaining is this class so as simple we will need user detail service at set before okay let go and have it auto add let have this okay at auto add sorry we don't we doesn't need this at auto add then the next thing we will do is to have private user detail service user user detail service and then we have user detail service so we can use this user detail service and the harm model so we need another model and then after this model we need a principal this we will use this interface to get the information of the authenticated user okay so we need user details user details okay and then user details since that it consists the information then we will use user detail service so the parameter user detail service then we will access load by username and then pass principal 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 okay so we, we are implementing this not in this class user details service at home we need this user details service principal principal so we, we have to write this dot get name okay as simple as this so then the next thing we need the model attribute for user details okay then I go to model so that to access the information model that attribute we will use this then we will have the parameter called user detail okay i will use this to access the full the name of the person who will access the okay let's go to the home to display it we will use this class so we need th text for this then in this th text we need a dollar sign and then let us say full name okay this is what we have so far and let's run the application and see if we, we have any problem then we can solve it okay we have error in the custom user service okay we did not close this and then let's rerun this application and see we also have another error in custom login application user controller so we need to close this again let run it and see so the application is running go to chrome and then 
try the local host register where our URL register is. So this is our registration form. And now let me enter my name and then like this Aliu Sahavo and then let me have copy this as just a username you can do you can have any username that you like okay so the registration is success but we doesn't have the registration successful so that is happening because there is implementation here let's check out the implementation that we have in our registration now if we look at here we have register success parameter so we have to implement this in our controller class let's go to user controller so in this user controller we will have redirect redirect then colon okay then we will have this so we will have question mark like this and then success so this is what we will supposed to have here then let's stop the application and run it again to see if this issue for the registration is fixed we are going to solve it step by step and see how far we have gone the application is starting okay the application started now let's refresh this okay continue so now you see we supposed to have the register face to check now let's have a name like Hydar Adam okay and then let's duplicate this to password and username so we have registration successful so we have fixed this issue the next thing is that we will check our database and see if uh, we have this in the database so here is our DB we will just refresh and then here you will come to this icon and then click so here we have Hydar and then Aliu Sahabo that we have put. Now we have to delete this. So now before, let's check out our login. Okay, here is the login. Okay, we are having issue in the login, the same thing. But the issue with the login is that we miss the div because here is the our login URL so let's check out in the login where we have missed the div so now let's go back to login here is login so there is somewhere we have missed div this is supposed to be for div here and this is the place where we have missed this div okay we will duplicate this to close the param dot arrow this error message and now let's run let's stop the application and run it again let's run the application again and then check for the login so the application is running the application is running okay the application started now let's go back and refresh okay here is our login then let's try to access using the password which we have submitted to db okay so we have we are having invalid username and this invalid username is not in the color that we have set so let's go back and then check so
this is where we have logout message and logout error message error message and param error message then logout message okay i think we're supposed to have a comma here to indicate that is bought for this now let's have let we stop the application and run it again i try to access with aliu then it shows me there is error because i have submitted two names with aliu inside the db we can also fix the issue so the application is started again let run it again and then okay you see we have the issue fixed now let me use the login okay you see we have this arrow but let me access with the header that i submit since that i submit only one in the dv okay we have access to this home we have some problem access to local host was denied so now let's go back and register a new name local host register let's register with something like this duplicate this to just check it submitted and then let's have it here to see what is the issue now it is passing to this home but it is not showing the page for the home and let's check the home page let's check the home page here is the home page and let's see the issue we have with the home page we have this user detail full name we have access to this let's check the error here is the error that we are having property full name cannot be found so this is where the error property full name cannot be found then we will go back to our custom user detail and check that the full name we have not the method to return this full name so let me check like this public string it will return the full name so that we will have full name public string public string get full name okay like this so we will return full name return full name okay this is the implementation we will have here and then let's check back and see okay the application is running again we are fixing the issue step by step so that is the method we that did not our user details that not see so that is why we are having this error now let's go back to login login okay and i will use the same header name to access so here is successfully access and we have the header name here header other my the full name is printed here but it it is too small let's go back to the css for the home okay in the css let's go back to the css okay the dashboard username font size is 18 username okay now let's change this to 
like 50 pixel and then stop the application and rerun it again so and we will log in and see what we have again the application is starting so we are fixing the issue step by step okay here we have the application started now let's check again we have to log in again okay with the name hider and then well then we have it uh, bigger than the previous one so we also have to log out so there is no logout here so we will have the option for logout so that we can log out so now go back to our spring suit tool and then implement the logout okay we will go to home here is home okay we are inside this home so we need a span we can copy from our register we need this so and then we will modify it so here is home then we can paste it here so we don't need this register but the span may, may will have an attribute of the security authentication which is seg authorize authorize equal to then we will pass is authenticated authenticated okay this is for the logout and here we will pass the logout url logout url so and pass log out here okay this is what we will do for the logout and so let's run, stop the application and run it again so the application is running So the application started. Now let's go to the login again. Use the same username, which is Hider, to pass through. So here is the logout. Now let's press logout. You see, we have logout successfully that we have in our login so this implementation is correct but there is something we also need in the register now let me register another name like usman okay full name usman muhammad something like this so and then i will have username like this so if i register this then let me re-register re this again we don't want to have two registration form if we have usman again if we have the same username we want it to tell us that the user already exists we have to implement this okay so now let's go back to our controller class to avoid duplicate saving we need to to avoid duplicate username we need to check using our user service we need a class user user then equal to here we can check using our user service okay 
user service dot find by username and then we will pass the user that is trying to save user dto dot find dot get username so here we will check the user service dot find by username and then here is the condition if user so if user is not equal to null which means user exists okay then we will pass our implementation here if user is exists is not equal to null okay we will work on this here is what we will implement here we will use the model model okay then we can use model here this model dot at attribute here is the attribute we will pass we will have user exists and then leave it to this user so it will return the page it will not go to successful it will not be successful it will just return the page now here is the page that it will return register this is the page if user is not equal to null it will return this and then if user is equal to null then it will go directly and execute this so then we will go to the register and also use this spam and have the implementation okay so we will go to the username field okay we will pass this and then change this completely this will change to username is taken and then here we will pass th if if user exists user exists okay if user exists then here is what we will have and then i think we will have to have style and give this color to red okay style and then color to red let's go to color then red okay this is what we will have here and then let's run the application again and check if we have implement this correctly the application is starting okay here is our application is starting yes the application started now let's check let's use the this username which already exists and check so username is taken okay this is all about our project and then if we go to login we will access the exist we have usman muhammad okay i hope you will subscribe my channel for more videos on spring boot and more videos on programming Thank you for watching.